Hello, and welcome back to my HTML tutorial series. Last episode, of course, we learned the basics of HTML, but in this episode, which will probably be the last episode, we're just going to cover a whole bunch of other features that HTML provides you to format data on your websites and the like. So, of course, this is our, our previous files that we had and our, our, our fancy little web page with um, a hyperlink to the other page and of course the hyperlink back and you go to Google if you want however we are not here to go to Google we are here to learn so the first thing we might want to do <coughs> is maybe put images on our web page but because of course images make all web pages better so a tag you would uh, HTML tag or element you would put an image in is just IMG for image and the things and the thing you want to put in that Unlike a lot of other tags, <coughs> it uh, excuse me doesn't have a closing one, so you don't have to put forward slash image on it to close it, much like the br break line tags we used. But what you do need to put on this tag is what's called an attribute, which again, the uh, anchor tag has an href attribute, but instead the image is going to need a source attribute, or we abbreviate it src. So source equals blah, blah, blah. So, this source is basically going to be a path to another image. So, if you want to uh, have a path to another image on the internet, you can simply copy a URL here. So, you know, including the protocol just leads to an actual .jpg file. So, we can save this, bring our website up and refresh, and there's a nice old picture of Pluto. Well, not old, actually quite recent, however, it's really nice. And that whole picture is just on your web page now which is nice. However, you might think that's a uh, that's a uh, pretty big. So we can what we can probably be able to do let's say okay, let's uh let's make that not so big by setting another attribute. And suddenly, with this HTML attribute of width, the width is now just 400 pixels. That actually sets it to pixels. So the width is just 400 pixels. You can also set the height. Well, as you can see, the height already changed, so it maintains its aspect ratio and doesn't look weird. However, we can also set the height to, say, 800. Suddenly, you have a weird picture. So I wouldn't recommend <laughs> doing that at all, but that's an easy way to, make, to you know, make sure your photos aren't too large. We're just going to keep the height of 600 there real quick. Let's see, now it's nice. It doesn't even overflow the page at all. But again, let's say you don't want to have to use static references for every image you have. So let's, so let's make another image. And this source, instead of being absolute with the protocol, which HTTPS is a protocol, we're going to make it relative. So we're going to go to, into our file explorer and we say, hey, test.html is in this folder. And we're going to we want to reference something in that folder. So I'm going to take this file over here, paste it in there desktop java dot uh, jpeg which of course is just my desktop picture so it's in the same folder so we can actually reference it in this source tag by just saying desktop java dot jpeg and we also want it all to look nice with everything else so we're going to restrain its width so our website has our web page has some semblance of continuity and refresh and you can see that yes it does in fact I mean, it, it uh, constrained the width instead. But you can see that image, we're just referencing it differently, and of course you can you can even right-click and download those images off the web page. However, now I want to set the height here. Since they are next to each other, of course you can change that just by putting a break in here. However, them side-by-side kind of look nice, so just to make them look better, same height. Ah, oh, that's nice. I swear I don't have OCD, but eh, you never know. So that's our web page so far. We have really nice images on there. So for but now I don't want to see them. So I'm, what I'm going to do is comment them out. And a comment in HTML is just a little weird. Like you saw when we did this doc type, any special thing, an exclamation point, and it's like, oh hey, what the heck are you doing? But exclamation point dash dash. Uh, HTML only has multi-line comments, and that's going to be a bracket an opening bracket, exclamation point, dash, dash. Now you end that, there's just a dash, dash, closing bracket. And suddenly this whole block is a comment. We can save, we can refresh the page, browsers will ignore it, and we don't have the images in there anymore. 
So let's say uh, we want to format some data, which of course is what HTML was originally made for. So first, let's start with some lists. Let's say like simple bulleted list, a simple bulleted list. So let me just make some formatting since I like things to look pretty. And we're going to say h3 shopping list. So how can we actually order this thing? Of course, we could do something really easy. We could say paragraph. Let's say milk, break, eggs, break, I don't know, Windex, oh, not that, break. And if we wanted to make it look just a tiny bit fancy, maybe we could put asterisks, its own custom bullet points. However, this looks meh. Well, I mean, it looks better than just having a list there, but that was a bit arduous and comp convoluted and eh, not, and hint, that could look different on every browser. But what we can do instead is something called an unordered list, and of course HTML loves its abbreviations. It's actually called UL. So UL stands for unordered list. And then in here you can have list items, and as you might be able to guess, abbreviation LI for list items. So list item may be milk. You close it. LI eggs. LI paper towels. So now we can see, suddenly it looks a lot better, a lot more like a list. And the benefit of this also is that in these list items, you can put even more HTML. So we can say milk, and we can say strong, or because uh, these are other ways to format texts. So M stands for emphasis, 2%. So we're emphasizing, hey, we want that milk to be 2%. So it's it, emphasis actually puts italics on it, or you could do strong to make it bold. Obviously, with such a small phrase, it looks a bit negligible. But of course, you can put you could even put an image in there. However, that would look a bit uh, weird. But let's say, hey, you don't want bullet points. You want uh, you want to like give out a clear list of instructions for someone how to make a web page, if you will. Now in this case you don't want it to be an unordered list, you want it to be an ordered list, and well that uh, goes along the same abbreviation lines as an OL. So OL stands for ordered list, and of course it keeps the same list items, but of course uh, milk eggs and paper towels does not a web page make. So we can clear that O's. Let's just say make an HTML file. <laughs> Write HTML the file. Save file. Just several list items. Of course you can always add as many list items as you want. And now we can look at this, and suddenly they're ordered. One, two, three, four, five, six. A nice ordered list, if you will. And the other, the other thing similar to this, let's say if you want to just have some a simple dictionary. This is really to pair different terms together, more oh, sort of more like a table. I think the tag is DT. <laughs> I know I'm so sure, sure of myself, but let me make sense of, let me make sure, in fact, because there's, ah, DL, which means a detailed list. So, like all the other lists, it's a list. So, this is probably title. Let's say HTML. This isn't really going to be any dictionary to, I mean, that any title. You're just going to basically tell you some uh, acronyms. And of course, we can do several others. Let's say we wanted www, which of course stands for the, not the world, but the World Wide Web in any case. Then HTTP should be hypertext transfer protocol, which is of course the protocol that websites use.
to actually communicate. So now this is organized as something uh, a little different. So each DT, which is a uh, like a D, like a data title or a detail title. Well, think about it. T title and D data. So it has a title HTML on the left side and data under here. So you can see the hypertext markup language obviously is under HTML. It's a subset of it. So uh, that's uh, a way to organize data. I don't use that very often, but it does look good, especially if you learn some CSS to make it look even better. It can be a handy way to organize data. So that's basically all the lists. So let's say you don't have just an array of data you want to present. You have a table, you could say. Also, this break is a bit too much. So, well, lucky enough, HTML has a table, even. A table can have several things. You might want to start out with a T head, which, as you might guess, stands for table head. And you might want to split this also up to have a table body. Now, you don't need to actually specify a table body in it or a table head for that matter, but it does well for formatting. So that way your table can have a head. And how tables work is that they're laid out into first rows and then columns or cells. So you do TR, stands for table row. And in this row you have TD, which stands for table data. So this is obviously the header, so let's say we're just trying to do uh, name, age, um, I don't know, TD, sorry, and location, and it all formats this for you. So the table head should only ever have one row, the table body, however, can of course have as many rows as you want, and just for, so data makes sense, we can say name could be Emily, uh, age could be 32, Location could be Denver, Colorado. And then let's just make a few more of the, these just so it can make sense. Say Emily, Stephen, 23, Boulder, Colorado, or Nick, 42, uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. So now, that's how we lay out, so in each of these rows has several cells in them, so each of these is an individual cell in a cell, in a column, I should say. And now that we see that, you can't really tell, I mean, it's laid out all like a table, and even when I highlight it, you can see all of it, which is useful. But, so obviously it has its own formatting to it to look like, so it is organized like a table, however, it doesn't look much like a table. So how you can actually change that is put an attribute on table, and let's just say border equals one. Well, there you go. Now it looks a lot more like an organized table. And of course, you can increase this if you want it to be even more uh, bold, you could say. Of course, that's quite an arbitrary number. That's silly. So I normally just stick with one. But a nice outline table, and you can display whatever you want on it, of course. It's useful if you want to display two-dimensional arrays or matrices or a relational database. So if you have a database, you might just store people with age, location, or you might have email address and passwords and a whole bunch of other information. And in a relational database, each person would get a row, and each column would be filled with that certain amount of data. And so if you want to display that database on a web page, you would, of course, use a table. What I think you can also do is yes cell padding so you might notice things like you know these are these words are pretty crowded like Stevens crowded age is crowded Boulder Colorado is crowded it's really you know up close against the border so it looks a bit dense so we can of course change that let's say set cell padding equals five and of course five is still representing pixels here so basically that what says that says left edge five pixels top bottom right five pixels everything, all the content in a cell has to be five pixels from the border of the cell. So now it looks a lot more open and a lot more neat. And you might have seen cell padding. We can also change. And it doesn't do much. Oh, well, cell, oh wait, cell padding, I'm sorry. I meant to click cell spacing, which should do something. Which is, again, which is just the space in between cells. So that's another way to accentuate 
the border between the cells. And of course, if we took border off and we had that cell spacing on, then they are larger apart. You may even be able to make this negative and get a hilarious effect. Uh, unfortunately not. Well, cell padding is still 5. Yeah. Unfortunately, that cannot be negative. But anyway, tables are always a nice way to organize things, if you will. So maybe you want to put other stuff in the table. So obviously we can change the amount of columns and rows real very easily. So let's just do some overhauling here. And of course, in HTML, you can put any HTML in, in any other HTML element. Uh, and like I said before, you can just take out these T-bodies. Especially if you don't have a head and it's just a table, I just leave those in there. But in here, let's say we wanted in... So early, we wanted uh, just a uh, table data, of course. And in there, we wanted an image. So for example, let's take these out of its HTML comment. And we'll just put them in this table. And I'll format it a little better so it's not as uh, doesn't look as convoluted. And we'll just take this image and put it right there. So obviously this image has the absolute link to another image. This one is a relative link. And then if we just pop in here again, you can tell this time they're on different rows. So if we wanted them next, and the fur sort of look better, we'll just take out the cell spacing. That way, they're actually completely in the border, except from except for some padding on the bottom that's actually automatically added. But now, which we may actually be able to change, I doubt it, because I'm not sure if that's coming from the oh that changes that at least. So the change the padding that was on the top and left and probably right of it, but there's a little bottom padding. I'm a little annoyed about it, but I don't care too much because it's not that much of a problem. So we can obviously do, instead of them having on two different rows, we could have them on the same row right next to each other. And since they're the same height, yes, it will look just as good as before, except I just need to drag this window. So now they have just a nice little border around them because they are in a table. So as you can see, you can use tables to easily format things uh, not that well not just with the border but you know keeping things in rows or columns and that's uh, useful uh, if you're not using CSS if you're using pure HTML basically you can use tables to format things however you want because as you saw when we had the wording and the letters in the table the size of the columns and rows changed based on the content in them so Obviously, the long names were close to the edge before we put the cell padding in, but the shorter names were buffered automatically, so they weren't up against the edge of the cell. So the browser handle, handles all of that sizing and displaying for you, as, I mean, it does for everything else. But tables are pretty much the magical way to go to format things on a web page if you're using just HTML. This day and age, I don't recommend using just HTML because uh, they have useful resources like CSS and JavaScript, which can help you out in that thing. Uh, the last thing that I'm going to cover in this episode before I, I, I shamelessly plug my <laughs> farther plug my, my soon to be made series on CSS and JavaScript etc is our forms I should say. Forms are extremely uh, valuable on websites because forms are how you well it's how you send data to the server in fact like if you've ever seen email form or any text field or buttons or things like that on websites you see those are all part of forms and it's a short word so HTML doesn't abbreviate it we just get our nice little form tag and in this form tag you can set out what are called well inputs and labels but first we're going to do inputs and inputs are like other tags just be our image and that they don't have to be closed so this is this will work by itself but we want to give input a few things and there are two most important things you need to give input type which can be several things, but this type is going to be text. You can also do things like a combo or box or button, 
So you can have like radio buttons or combo boxes or submit buttons or just buttons in general. But there are several other things you can also do. It's a lot of fun. Type and name. Name is important because what this form does when you submit it, it sends data to your web server. So unfortunately, this form isn't going to do much in this episode because we just have our standalone website without a server, which is accessing it directly on the web browser. But you will need to know this for when you're going with servers. And the name you give it here, the name attribute, will be how the server knows the name of that variable. So let's just say the name here is uh, first name. For example, and we and that and that's perfectly fine. We can leave that as is. But in every form you want, you want type equals submit. And that is the submit button. So when you press that button, it will submit the form and send all the data to the server. And normally you want the button to say something. So value is how you tell it to say something. So we'll say value equals submit. Yeah, we'll just go with submit for now with an exclamation point of course for added enhancement. So if we go and refresh this right now we say we see a field with the submit button so we can be like well my first name Scott submit yeah I mean it doesn't do much. I reloaded the page and emptied the field but that's just a default but you're thinking well you press the submit button how does this thing know what to do? Well you have to put some attributes on the form and there are two main ones that matter there's action which is actually going to be the link to the page or servlet or you know it's server side stuff that will actually handle all the data you're sending in. So you could be like uh, servlets useless form dot php for example and that could be the servlet that handles all this information. So obviously again that's going to be a topic I'll cover in some of my server tutorials. However right now you just need to know it's it exists. And the next is method. And method could be several, several things, except you're only ever going to use two of them. It's either going to be post or it's going to be get. Now, don't be confused by what these words actually mean in English. They both send data to the server, and that's pretty much it. Get, how it sends it in the URL, so you would be able to actually see all the parameters you send in the URL you're doing, which is handy if someone, if you put something in get in the URL and you want someone to be able to share that page that has those specific parameters then get is useful however if it's sensitive information like username and password you want to use post because that doesn't send in the URL it, send it sends it in a separate message from the URL so it isn't as you know out in the public as the other one but just for example we'll set this method to get so we can actually see it so we should be able to do is refresh this page first of course type Scott uh, we're actually going to change it because when action is pressed it actually redirects you to this so we're gonna change this to test.html so it just it comes back so we so this isn't a use, useless example but we submit and if we actually go to the edge of the URL we can say there's a question mark which means hey I'm gonna I'm sending you get parameters to this URL the name first name equals Scott and you know those aren't the only parameters we can send we can also do type equals text name equals last name very similar don't you think so we can do Scott Sony so I forgot to refresh oh wait no no I did it the fields there sorry just a quick lapse so now if we look at it there's first name equals Scott and uh, the ampersand or and sign in the URL separates the different parameters. So first name equals Scott and last name equals Fasoni. So that captures all these things. And if we change this to post, we will no longer see those parameters. So as you can see, the URL no longer holds those values. Just for example, we're going to keep this at get. Now what you might be thinking is, uh, which field is which and how do I know what I'm filling out? And there's two ways that you can go about that. Well first I'm going to put break lines here so they're all on different lines because I like formatting if you couldn't tell already. And there's two ways. One is a placeholder. Say place equal equals first name here. So refresh. 
send the form again because it doesn't matter. So not only did we format it better, but in gray text it says first name here. And you can't highlight it or anything, and as soon as you start typing, that disappears. And if you empty it again, it says it again. So that's really useful for fields. Then another thing you can do is just, you know, say say it like this, you know, very explicit. Yes, send the form again. So that's so obviously that's a little more explicit. However, it would be handy if we could just uh, you know click on either of these, and it gives me to the form. So that's they have a specific element for that called a label. And a label takes a specific parameter called for, and that's basically you you telling it what what input it's going to. So we can say last name, except I don't think that'll work. <laughs> yeah, I do, I don't think it'll work, but you know. It might work. So in order, this for doesn't reference the name; it references the ID. So when ID is an attribute, you can actually give to any single thing on this page. We could give, say, this paragraph equals ID equals main paragraph, and it could be anything. That's not going to do anything for us if we're just using HTML. And I mean, unless we want to use a label for it, that is primarily for JavaScript and CSS. So you don't have to worry about that just yet. But if we do ID equals last name, and so ID, and this says for, it's last name. So when you click on that label, it's going to redirect you to that input right there. So now if we click on last name, we can click anywhere on last name, and it just redirects our focus into the field. So we can say, uh, first name Scott, click on last name. And it'll just focus in the field. We can just type directly for Sony. We can press enter. And then, uh, yeah, we can press enter and submit the form, go into the URL, and we can see the parameters got successfully passed. So that is invaluable for web pages because that's your primary form of communication with the server to get user information until you get JavaScript, at least, of course. So it's really important to know how that works, but again, you need to. It's more important when you actually know how to do stuff on the server side, which I will put a tutorial up for. And finally, HTML is really just the bare bones of the internet. That's really, you know, the the blood and bones, or really, that's really just the bones of the internet because that provides structure. In order to make beautiful websites like that you see, that you actually see nowadays, you need to combine them with CSS and JavaScript. If HTML is the bones of the of a website, then JavaScript is the muscle, and CSS is the skin. In in such an analogy that the JavaScript provides interactivity and function to a web page, like hey, click on this, do this, and you know if this element changes at all, execute this code. And JavaScript can also communicate with the server in its own right, but then CSS is pretty much what you use to just change how things look. It's how you make a site presentable and look different. So you might have saw with the images earlier we did height equals 400 as an HTML attribute. Well CSS can just do that really easily as well and that's where you normally do all of your looking is with, with all your appearance and aesthetics is with CSS. So I will put uh, tutorials off for that as well because you really need to know that triangle of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript in order to really be a web developer or and then also learn the server side stuff to be a webmaster which is a, I kid you not that's an actual job title that a lot of people have and it's not a bad job to have you get a lot of money not not as much money as say a software engineer but it's a really important job to have and we need those people to you know, actually have these great websites and interactivity that we do on the internet nowadays but in cessation Thank you for watching this HTML tutorial series, and hopefully I'll see you in another series for web development. Until then, have fun.